All right, guys, welcome to season two of Echo Lead. This is Team Ranged MKB versus Five Potatoes, and for some reason, I am not picking up in game at all, so that's great. Uh, I'm gonna try to figure that out, but uh, those of you watching on stream, welcome. I am Moxie, obviously, and uh, I've got Lance as my co captain. Uh, it's not co captain, sorry, co caster tonight, so let me figure out my settings in game really quick. I'm not sure why this is happening. Church just fell settings, no biggie. My voice team is open. Alright, yep. Uh, no one can hear me in game, unfortunately, so that's fine. So, uh, anyways, I guess this is uh, how we're gonna have to do this via Twitch, so. Looks like we've got a couple bands coming out here. We've got the Ember Spirit Band and the Bristleback, both of those very, very strong right now. Band over on the Ricky and, of course, the Legion Commander. Um, kind of very specific hero, so I'm wondering if they did like their homework on the side of Five Potatoes and they realized that they play that quite a bit. Do have a silencer pickup here. We know that they like to run it as support and core over on Five to pa Potatoes, rather, so I'm not sure what they're going to do, but it uh, gives them a lot of draft flexibility. And of course, Crystal Maiden is just a really strong pickup early on for the side of ranged MKB. That extra arcane aura giving that mana to the uh, early roamers. In fact, there's an early roamer coming out right now. We've got the Night Stalker. So I'm guessing we're gonna see some really uh, aggressive moves coming out from the side of ranged MKB early. So they're going to have to be careful on the side of Five Potatoes with their draft. Looks like Diaspora is drafting. Usually it is Michael J. Jackson who drafts for the side of Five Potatoes. So uh, interested to see what they come out here. This could also be a position for Clockwork as well. Um, not sure how they're going to run that. They're going to run those three or four. Again, flexibility with either one of these heroes. What do you think, Lance? I really like range MKB's uh, support duo. The CM just a good static laner, and uh, the Night Stalker is good with roaming at night time. So. Do you have a Are phone you... by your microphone by any chance? I'm getting uh, some yeah. high pitch. Yeah, I'm getting high pitched feedback off of your your mic. Might want to move the phone just a little bit away. All right, is it better? Or? Still there a little bit, but it's fine. I'm sure uh, we can just deal with it. Especially considering I'm not even casting in game right now, so that's fun. Axe gonna get banned out over here. Looks like they're banning out a couple of these strong off laners. Of course, Bristleback also being used as a core, but uh, seems like they don't want the dubs getting any sort of traction here. Yeah, Range Team QB has like a lot of standard bands, just you know, really strong off laners and Amber Spirits. And yeah, as you said, like MGG's uh. MG's bands are like, they look like they probably researched the enemy team. That's why they're banning those worthy heroes. We know that Diaspora does a lot of research whenever she's going up against another team, so. Definitely makes sense that they ban like comfort heroes. The troll's gonna get banned out. Again, that's a really great addition to like an early kind of uh, mid game fighting team just to push down towers. And right now, Five Potatoes doesn't have a tower pusher, so. Awesome, well, we've got a little bit of a lull. Thanks for all the cheers, guys. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to address every single one that's in chat when I'm casting, but know that they are definitely appreciated and uh, a lot of fun too. So place your place your cheers for which team that you uh, think's gonna win, especially towards the end of the draft here. No OD is gonna come out here on the side of Five Potatoes either. I wonder what they're going for if they're gonna ban out an OD. Is there something very specific that they want or? Probably a strength hero. I think we're gonna see like a Sven coming out here on the side of ranged MKB, or? Mm, Sven is not bad. Pairs really well it's, with Crystal Maiden. It's not that great against the uh, clockwork because you can just hold them in place the whole game, mm -hmm. the whole fight. Unless they pick up something like uh, 
No, because they actually have, they have their supports already, so we're not going to see anything that's going to be able to swap them out. Of course, you can always get a force staff on either one of these heroes. Not really core on Night Stalker. Uh, Crystal Mane, though, of course, being able to do that jungling with that frostbite early on. Could opt to go for a force staff just for positioning. She is very, very slow now as well, uh, so that might help out quite a bit. Maybe we'll see, though. Yeah, they might also be picking up her uh, ranged uh, melee mid hero. That's why I don't want to play against Yodi in that mid lane. Jug's gonna get banned out. Pretty standard ban right now as well. And they go for a Sand King. All right, they've got quite a nice amount of team fight coming out from the side of Team MKB. It will also uh, discourage a melee core over on the side of Five Potatoes just because that Caustic Finale is just so awful to deal with early. Yeah, they might be looking to run dual lanes with the Night Stalker Sand King. Not entirely sure though. They could just have Sand King solo off lane as well. I think it really depends on what Five Potatoes picks up for their uh, their safe lane. Yeah, if they can punish easily, they'll probably just do lane. I feel like the clock works really, really good though, and has a you know the four kind of just pushing them back, making sure they don't have the mana, and just being a general like annoyance. Uh, we'll. Have some problems stealing, obviously, with the caustic finale if he's kind of hanging out and landing. He's too close to the creeps, but Lena. I'm guessing that's going to be a dubs Lena, or sorry, not dubs, sorry, snow Lena mid. That's a little scary because they have a night stalker, and uh, Lena, of course, is very very squishy and needs to be careful once that night time comes around that all the supports have TPs on them. Yeah, I think uh, what they're hoping for is clockwork initiates and. Silence just silences and then they take a fight because if like if range MKB gets the jump on Lena, like she's definitely gonna get blown up instantly. So they have to like execute their their draft really well on uh, five potatoes to make sure this Lena stays alive in the fights. Well, definitely, it feels like it'd be a good game also to pick up a Yule so that way she can purge off that silence coming out from the Night Stalker. Um, yeah, so probably see. first on Yule's for Lena. Well, TA pick up here, TA. Not gonna have, like, she's gonna have a little bit of problems just because Lena outranges her, but the burst damage coming out, and if she gets that mobility again coming in with that blank dagger, you're gonna be able to blow up at least two of these heroes very, very easily. Uh, Silencer and Lena, obviously. Yeah, I think, uh, T likes that matchup, but Lena can definitely win it, because you can just, like, get one level in Fiery Souls and hit a LSA and just right-click her, uh, refractions off, then you use a, use a Dragon Slave to nuke her. So both of those heroes, like, it's a fine lane for both heroes. Oh, gross. Viper. Oh. Now like the Viper next mid. question, yeah, I was about to say, so this is position one silencer, Viper, mid, Lena Clockwork supports, I'm guessing? I don't know. I mean, granted, again, MJJ's not the uh, drafter tonight, but I know that the team has definitely been practicing certain types of drafts, so I'm wondering if they're just sticking to something similar to like that. But uh, that is one thing that Five Potatoes and also all of MJJ's former teams have been known for, is that they do very open-ended drafts that are allowed to kind of rotate around. I've also seen, you know, Viper as a position four as well, you know, get a mech on him, just have him harass a lot early, so that's also entirely feasible. I can already tell that this TA is like triggered. Like you go into the game like, alright, I'm gonna play against Lena, give me TA. Then they just like force pick Viper and you're like, oh shit. Again though, it might not necessarily be a uh, a mid Viper. Uh I'm be sure. It might not, but I think more than likely it will be. They actually banned the spend on the side of team uh ranged MKB here. So, I'm not sure what they're looking for, for their actual carry. They take the Terror Blade out of the pool as well. Maybe, yeah, that's actually a good call on that, because they could go just fully illusion based, and if you don't have anything to do with it, you're just going to get run over with a Terror Blade that's got meta up. Yeah, you're completely right. It'll be interesting last pick from both teams, I think. Like, Five Potatoes could use their, as you said, they could change their lanes and... They could have like really versatile players and play any hero. So, like range MKB could be right, you don't really know what's what they're in for right now or what the lanes might be. So, if you had to predict on one of these, 
Like for the last picks, what do you think we're gonna see for each team? I honestly have no idea. Uh, but if I had to guess, uh, I don't know. I I don't I honestly don't even know what five those are looking for, so it's really hard for me to say. Uh, Ranger Kim is probably looking for a carry, so I want to say maybe I don't know. Blue Stone Wolf is good. They found out a lot of carries on the side of Five Potatoes, so there are not that many great carries left, I guess. Uh, I'm not too sure. Looks like they're not too sure what they want to pick up either quite yet. They go for the sniper here. All right, interesting. A lot of ranged heroes coming out from the side of Five Potatoes. They might be looking for on range. They might be like a hero who can, uh, like someone who builds Manta, maybe who can also jump on sniper. Like I would say, anti mage isn't bad, but uh, then you have an anti mage on your team. And they look like they already have like a greedy. They have like three greedy heroes already. Like Night Stalker wants farm, Sanking wants farm, T wants farm, so it'd be kind of greedy to get anti mage here. But then I also go for like Slark, just so he can, you know, get the Shadow Blade, jump on the uh, Sniper or PA maybe. And yes, those three I like heroes. the Slark idea actually a lot because jumping over onto Lino or the Sniper, getting in the back lines is going to be kind of important, I think, for the side of uh, MKB just because they really need to close the gap. Um, you know, they can definitely do a lot with smokes. They get the blink on the Sand King. That'll definitely help, but something for mobility to get behind those back lines is going to be really important. And it's pretty hard for TA to, to be able to uh, get around, you know, shrap charges and when she's getting, you know, burnt out by the nether toxin coming out from Viper. And unfortunately, PA is definitely out of the question because of the fact. Okay! Well, I guess he's not out of the question. Well, I was saying it was going to be out of the question because they've got great MKB carriers over on the side of uh, Five Potatoes, but I mean, the other thing is you got to get to that point. you got to get to the point where you either have a Silver Edge or you've got the uh, MKB, but they've got a huge timer right now that they need to be working on the side of uh, ranged MKB. It's a, it's a hard lean for PA, I would say. I feel like they got a little memed here. Because they are team ranged MKB, and now they've got, you know, Sniper who can go MKB, Silencer not really one that goes MKB, Viper who can go, um, you know, the Shadow Shadow Blade into Silver Edge, both of those, Sniper and Viper. Even Lena if she really wants to. Hmm. Interesting. Does a uh, for uh, like, play carry? No. Oh. That is a, uh... So it's going to be a Silencer and Lena Support, Clockwork, Offlane, Snow, Mid Viper, and Sniper is going to be Pink Tops. It looks like everyone's grabbed their heroes now, so we should be loading in shortly. I feel like my Dota might crash, just because it's the audio is bugged, so... We'll see. If it crashes, I may, might give you a chance to, you know, fix your audio settings so you can be fair in the game, maybe? Yeah, maybe. I wonder if I should, like, disconnect real quick right now while we're loading it anyways. I don't think I can now, though, with the fight on screen. <laughs> and the game of towers looks like that's gonna go over to the side of Team Fat Potatoes. Boy, pink tops, higher companion than everyone on the enemy team. What a god. <laughs> Alright, moment of truth. Loading in. Can I click on things? Can I move around? Alright, I'm actually going to reconnect and see if I can fix my audio that way, though, real quick. So, one second, Problem. guys. I'll tell you if you miss any first bloods, it's fine. No. Fine, they're just, you know, spamming voice, voice chats. Oh, I'm really glad I'm actually missing that. <laughs> I was doing that, like, a ton in uh, our game. I hope it triggered it, uh, Yeah, it triggered me. Yeah, mm hmm Thanks for that, by the way. It's hilarious in-game, but... It's a little annoying that... when you're trying to cast and then people are... Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Alright. Looks like I'm loading back in right now. Finishing loading circle. Yeah, nothing's happening. 
people and just standing at runes. Alright, we're back in. My mic still doesn't work, so it doesn't matter, but, uh... Sorry guys, for those of you in game, I hope that you know enough to come over here. Uh, when you see the Twitch name, but anyways, we'll go ahead and introduce the teams on the side of Team 5 Potatoes. We have Dubes, who's playing the offlane clockwork. Snow, who's going to be playing the Viper mid, disgusting Viper, gross. Uh, over here, we've got Dasper, who'll be playing the support silencer. We've got Old Pink Tops, who's going to be playing the sniper. And of course, we've got Turf standing in tonight as Lena. On the side of the Dire, we have Team Ranged MKB. We have, I can't see this that clearly, Rondo, Rondo's headbands? I'm guessing. Uh, over here on the Night Stalker, we've got Evernight, who's going to be playing the Crystal Maiden. Pony Gold Boy going to be playing the PA. KTP going to be playing the mid TA. And in the offlane here, Papa BRK. And apparently a lot of them have the sponsor of Dill Pickles, so. I feel bad for this TA. She probably is uh, not going to enjoy this laning phase at all, with Snow just constantly orb walking her. Yeah. Sniper has a range award as well, so he's going to be able to hit uphill. The Sand King's not going to get a lot out of this lane, unfortunately. Like, he's still sitting at level 1. He's got Turf throwing uh, some right clicks at him. The game's going to be pretty hard for him. And Dubes trying to get close here. Also struggling, though. He's not able to really get that close to the creep wave with, of course, Rondo's kind of running up and trying to push him back. A couple daggers getting thrown, too. Picks up his cogs for his level 1. We'll be able to separate the Night Stalker. Night Stalker doesn't seem too concerned. We'll be able to go ahead and get 16 gold off of those cogs. Um, Clockwork's uh, pretty happy here because there's two range creeps pushing the wave, so he's gonna get like a full wave XP under his tower. The other hand, uh, Sand King, oh, they're pulling on uh, five potatoes, so Sand King's having a rough time. And already one and a half. TA having a little bit of trouble here in mid. She had her pool tangos, but unfortunately against a viper, she might have wanted a little bit more regen. Uh, did opt to grab a fairy fire just in case she gets very, very low and also help with CSing, but uh, this is definitely not a fun lane for her right now. Where do you think we're going to see first blood? Uh, probably say... Probably one of the... Probably one, one of the off lanes. Well, one of the side lanes, I guess. Uh, maybe top? Yeah, it looks like Dupes is uh, really kind of hungry for this Crystal Maiden. Cogs come out, though. Might be able to just run himself out. Evernight chasing after. Does not have enough mana to go for another Frostbite. This is slow coming out. That's going to be a Dupes first blood. And Rondo's headband will happily take that as he makes his way closer and closer to uh, a higher level so he can gank during that first nighttime period. It's like I was right as always. Man, you say that, and then the more you start casting, you're gonna start getting the caster's curse. Oh, Lena uh, moving her way over mid here does have the, uh, the haste rune. Ooh, Turf needs to be really, really careful. Setting a little bit low. Clockwork Flare coming in, and one final hit. Turf will actually make it out there with, uh, 59 hit points. Nice use very, of the, uh, haste rune there. Very calculated diet coming in from five potatoes. A little bit of aggression here in the bottom lane. Looks like Papa BRK was uh, trying to get a little bit more out of this lane now that he knew that Lena was gone. However, has to be a little bit of careful because they do have the Shrap charges and uh, both of them being ranged. We'll be able to harass him pretty strongly here. Rotation coming out here in mid as well. We do see that Rondo's headband is headed over. I don't really love this because he's taking away some of that XP from the mid player and it's not nighttime, so he's not going to be able to do much here. Uh, I think it's more important to, uh, Tia gets farm. Like, right now she doesn't have a bottle. So, if she can get some CS by him just being there, it's fine, I think. Also, it gives Night Stalker some, like, levels. So he can, like, have, like, you know, level 2 void for when nighttime comes around. That's not the worst thing. Papa BRK is sitting pretty low here. Self actually gets used around making the uh, rotation down towards the bot lane. I would love to see them grab maybe a smoke. It's almost nighttime too, right? Four minutes nighttime. I uh, would like to see Crystal Maiden and, and Night Stalker maybe perform a gank on mid, make a little room for this uh, TA who's having a bit of trouble, especially with the uh, Lena just kind of walking through here. Lena does have a ward. Looks like she's thinking about replacing over here by the rune as well. 
surprised that snow is pushing up so far here again because it is nighttime and there is a night stalker uh, again viper is going to be able to be pretty aggressive though with another toxin and the uh corrosive skin so i guess he's feeling very confident right now but we do see the rotation coming out here from the night stalker they're using a scan they're looking for any sort of support that might be standing on the side it looks like no it looks like they think that the night stalker is gonna be there and again night stalker coming for it again gonna throw off one one hit and then just run himself out mm. Hot lane Bjerke a little bit out of position here. I think he doesn't realize that the uh, silencer is actually here in lane. We'll throw out a uh, curse here. Follow up with a nice light strike array. And just harass him back. He's sitting at level 2 right now. He's almost level 3. A rotation coming out here from the Night Stalker. Looks like they wanted to go in for like a uh, burrow strike. But unfortunately decided against it from the side of uh, MKB here. Probably be really too easy to kill that Lena if they went on her. She's only level two, and they can't really do much to help her. They don't really have any other stuns besides LSA in that lane. I mean, I think they're giving this clockwork like way too much though. Yeah. Like, he's already level five, like almost like one level away from six, like this early. And he's just gonna be able to gank the TA. It's gonna be really hard for them. This clockwork gets a lot of early levels. I really would like to see a smoke coming out from ranged MKB here. Go ahead, these boy chasing after. There's gonna be Diaspora coming forward. She actually hits a creep instead of the uh, Night Stalker there. A little bit of miss aim, but pretty calm otherwise, considering. I was thinking we see a lot of early aggression coming out, but not so much yep. here. Yeah, five throws like getting a lot out of lanes. Like if you look at the CS, like the top five is like just is three or five potato heroes. Well, sorry. Yeah. I mean, the Viper and the Viper and Sniper just pulling away in CS. TA is like kind of recovering now, like which is good for her. It's like really hard for TA as well, just because of the fact that when she lines up these side blades, she's still getting a lot of that uh, corrosive skin hitting her half the time, so she can't even really harass this Viper back. I'm surprised that no one's been stacking Ancients for her, that she hasn't been going for them, just because she is having a difficult time in lane, and there's no one really on the side of Five Potatoes that could contest those either. Some pinging coming out here. Looks like the two of them are on their way. They use a smoke. They want to try to get something done over here onto this Viper. Tia is sitting a little low, but she does have enough mana for, you know, traps and also going up that fraction. Uh, the only problem I'm a little concerned about is the fact that Chris Main does not have boots yet. She's going to be very, very slow if she tries to be the first one in there with the Frostbite, and she doesn't have a point in her slow. Meanwhile, over here, Dupes will come forward, immediately find Evernight. Evernight throws out the slow, puts in the hook shot. This is looking like a dead Crystal Maiden here. Viper coming around the corner, goes ahead, he uses Viper Strike. Crystal Maiden's going to be toast, and now KTP trying really hard here, but he's still going to get taken down by Dupes. Meanwhile, rotation coming out from Rondos. So Rondos is going to have to run himself out here. He just can't deal with that. And uh, I think now they just got to kind of fall back and farm. What do you think? Uh, yeah. They need to... Uh, yeah, I agree with you. They definitely just fall back and farm a little bit. They can't take these early game fights. They need to recover. They maybe need to, like, wait for levels on the Sand King or a rotation. Because right now, like, the Sand King's having a really tough time. Like, but I think both supports are higher level than the Sand King right now. He needs like a lot of farm too to do stuff, or at least like level four in his borrow strike and the rotation in his lane. So the side can use a lot. Yeah, Lena actually causing a lot of problems for him. We'll be able to push him back. I don't think that's quite enough damage to get the kill. Oh, it actually is, and Pink Tops will be able to secure a kill over onto Papa BRK. You know he'd be fine if he didn't have an iron branch in his backpack. Feels bad, man. Now we're starting to get away from the side of uh. Team MKB here, we got 4k over on the Sniper, 3.8 over on the Viper, and then the next closest is PA, of course, 3.1k. Uh, a little bit going towards favor of 5 Potatoes here, almost about 4k lead. 4k lead in terms of experience earned. The Viper is just like miles ahead of, uh, ahead of everyone in levels. 
just static leaning, getting a lot of his lean. We gotta figure out what's going on with your, uh, your mic later, and before we go into game two. It's so high pitched. It's getting louder somehow too. I don't know how. Oh, I think I know what it is actually. It's uh, it might be a cricket outside my window. Sorry. Oh still yeah. On, I'm still on campus, so I can't it's, read it. It's probably a cricket. Oh my gosh, that's too funny. Ooh, that was a so very annoying. aggressive forward coming out here from Papa BRK. He might actually be dead here. Gonna try to run himself out, get around the corner. Lena's missing the LSA here. That's an assassinate. One more hit. And Lena actually will be able to get the kill. Top lane, Dasper's in a little bit of trouble. Should be able to run herself back here. Nope, Dagger coming in from Pony Gold Boy will be able to clean up, but it looks like he's also in trouble. Not gonna be able to blink out to any of his creeps. Dubes will be able to clean up as well. Uh, I'll actually be right back. Okay. So we've discovered the uh, cause of Lance's high-pitched noise. It appears to be crickets on the outside. There's a double damage run picked up on Night Stalker here. He's not going to be able to do too, too much with it right now. Uh, it does not have darkness yet either, sitting at level 3. But is a little bit spooky for that Lena. I've got to make sure that she's getting herself away. Snow working on that Dragon Lance just needs a little bit more before he's got that. And uh, TA just kind of really behind here with the last hits. Unfortunately has had a very difficult time in lane. Not unsurprising though, again, laning against a Viper, especially as a TA, is especially difficult. Bottom lane assassinate coming out here. Doesn't look like it's gonna fully connect. They're trying to get the kill here over onto this uh, Phantom Assassin, but they're chasing after Pink Tops. They just need a little bit more vision. Lightstriker Ray actually gonna connect over onto Pony Gold Boy. Feels bad, man. They will be able to get the kill over onto the Sniper, but they'll also lose the uh, Night Stalker as well. Uh, looks like Snow was kind of AFK. Dubes, meanwhile, was able to get another kill in the top lane. Laning stage going really, really well for the side of uh, Five Potatoes here. Bit of pincering action going on over here at mid as well. KTP needs to be a little bit careful. He hasn't even finished up his phase boots yet. And Turf is actually going to rotate down to the bottom lane. Evernight needs to be very, very careful here. He's very forward. He's not very fast. And uh, he just used his Frostbite aggressively so won't have an easy way to get away if need be another rotation coming out though over on mid looks like uh, Rondo's maybe just hanging out for the rune to secure I don't know two people though up here on top we've got dubes of course on the clockwork sitting over and the uh, sniper also trying to put pressure onto pony gold boy here Assassinate coming out, just trying to be annoying onto this PA. It is dark time- uh, it's dark time. <laughs> it is night time though, coming out for the side of, uh... MKB. They back. find the clockwork, and he's gonna be able to grab the cogs. This is not gonna go the way that, uh, Rondo wanted, but he's gonna be able to get out with that flight coming out. Oh, but that hook shot will be able to finish up the deal. And now Papa BRK making the rotation. This is just too tanky of a target for the side of Team MKB to go after. It's gonna get a another kill yet again. And that's more int onto the silencer. Welcome back, Lance. I like going outside. Fortunately, uh, it's in a tree. <laughs> but I think I, uh, I need to move my setup next time I cast. I didn't even yeah. think about like crickets and stuff because I have that problem sometimes too. I actually have to like shut all my windows and stuff, and I just put my AC in today. So definitely feel that. Did you spot the? Uh, PA over here on the side, she's gonna just run herself out. And now there's- what I miss? Uh, you missed a couple kills. Um, it actually got very, very aggressive during the time that you were gone, believe it or not. But, uh, yeah, Five Potatoes is just- they're doing a lot of work here. Unfortunately, they initiated onto the clockwork at one point, and that is not the character that you want to jump on right now, because he's just very, very tanky, and they just don't have really that burst damage quite yet. I mean- the TA has a decent amount, but she wasn't there. It was the Night Stalker who ended up getting cogged, and then the PA, and that's gonna be a dead Crystal Maiden, too. That Frostbite actually killing her. Jump over here onto Snow. They might actually be able to get the kill. Silence coming out. Another dagger. He's gonna try to TP out. They don't have anything to give the, uh... Oh, he's gonna be able to get out! Meanwhile, as well... Bot lane, we see that Pink Tops is able to get a kill over onto Papa VRK. This poor Sand King is having such a rough time. He isn't even six yet. Hasn't been able to get any sort of farm. Yeah, they knew the Sand King to do really well. 
Unfortunately, uh, he's having a really rough time, 0 5. I think you just need to recover and uh, farm his Blink Dagger and like try to make fights happen once he has the Blink or get the cost. They really need to let Evernight finish up these uh, Tranquil Boots as well. She's just so slow now, this Crystal Maiden. I don't know how I feel about this uh, Templar Assassin getting uh, Dragonlance first item. You think she should have got mobility or Deso? Um, yeah, I think she needs a Deso. I don't think her team has the damage right now. But I, I mean, that. maybe she was thinking like, oh, her her Ooh, he is gonna kill. get Deso instead. Maybe she was thinking P is getting a Deso instead, so she doesn't really need it. Yeah, but uh, Ranger MKB doesn't really have any way to fight into into five potatoes lineup right now. It's really rough for them without initiation from their sand king. Like we can't, they can't just run into the lineup because then they're just they're just a clockwork and viper in the front lines. And then it's pretty obvious because like if they run into them like that, sounds like they can just silence and then that's already a lost fight. They've almost got the Shadow Blade up and running over on the Sniper as well, so I'm guessing he's going to be going for just the full-on, um, Shadow... Silver Edge. Edge. Yeah, I was like, Shadow's Edge. Nope, that's not right. That's definitely not right. I think they Too just pushed down here. It's way too... Yeah, I know. I know. I was like, I hope these games go really, really quickly and get back over to my Battlegrounds. <laughs> Cardi actually gonna take the last hit on this tower here in the bot lane. They just keep pushing forward. They know that they really can't do much to stop them. There's the Viper Strike yeah. coming out. That's a beautiful hook shot coming in, and Pony Gold Boy will get taken down by uh, Deems' Clockwork here. Yeah, probably didn't need the hook shot, honestly. This PA uh, out of position, unfortunate. Sanking has gone up top to take the farm up top lane now, so he can maybe work uh, towards his blink. Well, he didn't even have his level 6 earlier, like, I think that was a big thing that was important, but he's actually opted not to grab his 6 at all? Yeah, just going for another level of the cost 6 so he can farm a little bit faster. I'm just a little concerned because I think the side of 5 potatoes is going to be doing a lot of just 5-man pushing now that they've got pretty good items, they've got the lead, there's no reason for them not to sit back and, uh, and push. Regen rune here down the bot side. One more kind of... Keeping an eye out, but their tower's gone, so it's not going to do them much over on the side of the dire here. I've never seen that sniper rifle before from Pink Top, like the one Pink Top has. Which one? The myth sniper rifle Pink Top has. I've never seen that one before. Oh, uh, Pink Top has all the hats. Nice. He has all the hats. I think it. I wonder if it's like one of those really expensive ones, like those Chinese ones. It might be. That's because that's the Mjolnir, right? I don't know when that one came out. Already, again, we're seeing them group up. There's about three people here in the top lane. Looks like they're going to try to push. They don't have great vision over here in the jungle, uh, but they could always go for a smoke and a pick and just take that tower. In fact, looks like we're already seeing the move. I'm looking to see if that's over there, but uh, KTP. Oh, KTP is going to be able to see immediately over here. Jasper not going to be able to finish it up. She's getting words sent out to her currently. I think what uh, Five Potatoes need to do right now, they need to just go into Roshan. Like, it'll make their pushes a lot, a lot more easier. You just put it on the uh, Viper and let him stay in the front, and they could, like, literally not kill him. Let's so, see. it's, like, kind of a missed opportunity from Five Potatoes not going for the Roshan, like, while the Sanking still has no ult or any blink. I mean, at the same time, it's level 1 ult. How afraid are they of it, really? Because what I, are they going to oh, follow up? They don't have anything really, you know, you've got the burst damage coming out from this TA just because of Meld Strike. Uh, also surprised that we haven't seen any sort of like trap being placed over into the Roche pit by the TA, but uh, you know this PA is really far off from this death, so I really think that they can just go into that pit no problem, and they have dupes to be able to do some scouting out from the other side there, being able to kind of interrupt any sort of channeling possibly, although he's TPing out, they want to defend this bottom tower. Poor staff coming forward immediately, so now he's looking for something, but uh, looks like Papa BRK gonna be able to get himself out of here unless they get the hookshot. Looks like they're trying to smove over to the side so that way dupes could get it, but now this is gonna be a really good fight. In fact, Turf actually gonna get taken down by a dagger coming out from Pony Gold Boy. So, nice yeah, really rotation. nice plays. Yeah, they waited for the Viper and uh, Clock to TP out to take the fight. That was really smart by Rinch MKB. Getting a nice pick on the Lina. I mean, anything right now is uh, really good for them. 
It seems Sanking has uh, opted to not go for the blink. He's going for uh, Yules instead to, for more setup, uh, I guess. I'm not going to lie right now. I think it's really funny that, uh, you know, Team Five Potatoes is so far in the lead. And uh, as per usual, Diaspora is the lowest network <laughs> of either teams right now. The end of the hard five, man. Hard six. Like, we joke around. I've known Diaspora for, gosh, almost two years now, and she has always played just hard position six or seven for her team. <laughs> and look where I got BD. Got him a TI. <laughs> they do spot Dill Pickles over here. Oh, sorry, not Dill Pickles. KTP over here. A couple of procs coming off as well. Should be able to get herself out. Um, oh, but the clock! He's coming in. He wants to get this kill. Silence coming out, and that's a dead TA. And now that should be a free tier two. Oh, meanwhile, Sand King, though, over on the other side, he does see Snow. He's trying to get this kill. Final hit, though, over onto the PA. And now Papa BRK is in a lot of trouble. He's going to get taken down. Crystal Maiden Ultimate coming out, but they just do too much damage to her. And now the Flying coming out from the Night Stalker, desperately trying to get out, but they will be able to clean up. And that's a team kill. I think they can go into Roche now, no problem. Hold GG. Also, I know a couple people are mentioning they can't hear me in client. We talked about that earlier, unfortunately. Uh, I'm just not picking up in client for whatever reasons. But yeah, GG gets called, and we're off to game number two, guys. I think they got a little debated with the, uh, the Lena pick. I think they figured that was going to be the Lena mid, and uh, I think the TA just had too much trouble trying to lane and get CS. Yeah. It sucks when you think you're going to go against Alina as TA, then you end up going against Viper out of nowhere. Alright guys, we will be back with game number two, so stick around.
Alright guys, we're back with game number two of Echo League Season 2, Team Ranged MKB versus Five Potatoes. I'm your caster, Moxie. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, the Dota TV client does not want to pick me up at all. But, uh, if you're here, you already kind of knew that anyways. So, uh, I've got Lance as my co-caster for game number two. And first game, one over to the side of Five Potatoes. It looks like we've got the same exact bands coming out from both teams. Yeah, Ranger McKibby might uh, try to take one of the heroes from Five Potatoes just to deny pick them. I definitely think they uh, they might want to rethink their strategy here because that was a very open sort of draft coming out from the side of Team Five Potatoes and they weren't quite sure what's happening. In fact, they kind of got debated into that TA pick thinking that Lena was going to be mid and instead they used her as a position four, so be interested to see what they actually decide to do. I would like to see, I like the Night Stalker pick, but I felt like he just wasn't very effective early on. I feel like a very aggressive um, sort of lineup would be better for the side of MKB, kind of, you know, it seems like Five Potatoes, they hit a certain point and they just kind of started rolling together as five, doing a lot of ganks, getting those objectives, and this is actually really scary because that's going to be a turf Night Stalker. And uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with turf, he plays a really nasty Night Stalker. So team ranged MKB needs to be very, very careful now, and that needs to be a very scared Crystal Maiden shivering in her boots over there. They pick up the silencer again as well. I'm guessing that's going to be uh, Diaspora 5 on the silencer. Again, though, I've seen them use that as a core as well, so there's always the possibility of being very flexible with that pick. Early Darkseer pickup will uh, discourage them a little bit from going for melee cores, but of course last time it didn't bother them uh, at all, although rather that was, yeah, they did that with the Sand King in the last game, and they just ended up picking a Lina and a Sniper, and of course the Silencer was in game one as well, and they just didn't even care, so. Sven gets banned, the Viper actually gotta get banned this time around, they don't want to see Snow Viper. Snow actually wasn't able to let me use my counter last game. I'm a little disappointed, Lance. It's fine. I'm sure you'll have many opportunities in the playoffs if they make it. <laughs> I think uh, Range MKB might want to pick up like a disruptor here. It's really good. Like it's a uh, it's something I like to do when I'm drafting. Like Crystal Maiden, Dark Sir, Disruptor. It's a really strong. It's a really strong three. three those three are really strong together. Surprising I mean, with good ganking capability and also good harass coming out with the Disruptor's Thunderclap early. Yeah, and the back into Static Storm is always really strong. And, and the Disruptor, Disruptor CM is always just a really nice lane. Like, it's really hard for you to, it's really hard for you to disrupt that tri lane. But we'll see what they want to do. It makes it very scary because with the Crystal Maiden being able to hold someone into place and also slow them down, plus the Glimpse and the Cage, if you get... You don't even necessarily need to get another core with, like, a stun, but anything else with, like, a Disable, it's usually a kill. You could do something like uh, an Ursa gets a kill pretty easily with that kind of a lane up, um, and that kind of snowballs him as well, but then you're kind of on a timer. Sven has already been banned, obviously. Trying to think. I mean, they do have jugs still available to them if they want to go for that. Uh, Slark would be great with a disruptor because you're never going to miss a pounce. If you've got that glimpse, you just jump right over there, and that should be a pretty good kill almost every time, depending on how tanky that they've decided to choose for the offlaner. I haven't seen that many uh, Slarks or jugs these days for some reason. Did your cricket die outside your window? There's no, like, high-pitched chirping noise anymore. No, it goes and comes. Oh, that's nice. I hope it a died, nice, honestly. A nice quiet time here. The Underlord pickup, though. That's gonna be a uh, pretty big deal over in the offline. What are your thoughts? Because uh, I've been seeing this being picked up more and more lately. Terrible hero, but I'm sure anything can work. Uh, I just feel like he's really weak right now. Like he used to be super strong because he you just couldn't like uh, you couldn't do anything against him pretty much. Like he would have like all this armor and 
he'd have like a ton of damage from his passive. Now like they nerfed his passive and they also nerfed Firestorm, I think. So like he's just kind of like a lot worse. And the meta is like not as much five man push as as, as much it used to be because so you can't really use that dark shift. Dark, sorry, the dark rift anymore. Like you did before. <laughs> There's a troll pickup on the side of five potatoes here. I'm interested to see what they're going to end up picking for that mid position here on five potatoes, just because there is a spirit breaker who's probably going to be trying to charge mid as much as possible and really be disruptive. Um, but of course, there's still lots of good options for the side of ranged MKB here. They could pick up a... OD if they wanted, they could pick up a Quap that can get out, they could also, you know, if they're going full Wombo with the Crystal Maiden Darkseer, they could pick up a Puck here. Lots of options for the side of MKB. Or sorry, Five Potatoes, rather, um, to avoid that Spirit Breaker. Clink's pick, interesting. Is that going to be a Not safe sure. plane, Clink's? I hope. Yeah, I mean, probably safe plane, Clink's. They probably want to last pick their mid hero. I think Clinks is fine against Troll. Uh, but I haven't seen Clinks that much. Clinks is pretty good with the buff that they just gave out to him for his death pack. Um, does give them a little option to do a little bit of split pushing again as well, just because it seems like Five Potatoes, again, they really seem to like to just kind of get ahead and then start, you know, going for those objectives really strong and not giving them an inch, which is really, really important. Silent, uh, sorry, not Silencer. Sniper's gonna get banned out here, though. They don't want to have to deal with that again. And they pick up the OD over on the side of ranged MKB, which is kind of interesting. It does give them a lot of team fight over on the side of uh, MKB. A little bit of split pushing. They have a nice tower hitter with the clinks. Um, and it also gives them a chance to kind of just save people whenever needed with the Astral Imprisonment. I'm interested to see what Five Potatoes goes here. What do you think would be good? Mm. For carry for Five Potatoes, maybe is uh, Slark in the pool actually? Yeah, oh no, they need a mid actually, right? Yeah, they need a mid at this point. Oh my bad. Uh, let's see. And I don't think you send Alina at this point because Lena's just gonna get charged by Spirit Breaker. Um, They're feeling ballsy, sure, but this is a pretty bad Lena game, I'd say. I don't think uh, Storm is that bad, but I haven't I'm seen Storm in a while. Sure. I'm not sure if Seth plays Storm. It's actually a uh, interesting question. I'm actually not sure if he actually does that. Of course, Storm is also susceptible to ganks prey uh, before 6, so... I mean, Puck is also there. I, I, I kind of like Death Prophets. I don't think Puck Prophets really works bad. with their lineup. Lena. They still go for the Lena. Lena. Alright, I've got my uh, Snow Feed counter all set and ready. For those of you watching was... too, I'm not a... Huh, what was that? You thought it was Lena mid the first time, but now it's actually Lena it's mid. It's actually Lena mid. <laughs> for those of you watching too, um, not unfairly flaming Snow. Snow flames me all the time. It's just how our friendship works. I'm sure my boy uh, Pink Tops is gonna have a good game. Always uh, always uh, giving me uh, nice compliments in my games in Season 1. Aww, see now it's your chance to pay back the favor. Except it's not really a favor because you've had some really good plays in Season 1. Still lost though. Feels bad, man. RIP SSR. Venti. Anti menti feels bad, man. So, which draft are you favoring here? Um, it's hard to tell because I'm not looking at the draft anymore <laughs> right now. Based on towers, which team do you think will win? Based on towers, I mean, obviously it's got to be five potatoes. You seen those towers, man? Alright, we'll go ahead and, uh, I honestly, I feel like I like the side of Five Potatoes just a little bit better here, just because they're more of a skirmishy group, whereas the other team has, like, high cooldowns, which is a little concerning. But I'll go ahead and introduce the teams on Team MKB. We have Rondo's headband, who's going to be playing the Crystal Maiden. 
Pony Gold Boy, who's going to be playing the Clinks. Evernight, who's going to be playing the Spirit Breaker. We've got KTP on that mid OD. And Papa BRK is going to be playing the Offlane Darkseer. On the side of Five Potatoes. Turf, like we said earlier, is going to be playing his signature Night Stalker. I can't move around. There we go. Snow will be playing Melina mid. Diaspora is going to be playing Silencer. Dubes will be on the Underlord. And uh, Pink Top's going to be on Troll Warlord. Thanks, Snow. Oh, God. I'm glad I was DC'd the first time. Uh, I kind of like it, though. Of course you do. Me. Of course you do. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's because I'm not casting games as much as you. It's probably It probably gets really old. It does. But usually people get it out of the way like like right in the beginning and then I don't have to deal with it after that, so... I did it uh, when I did them, like, it was like when I was actually feeling things, like... When, Wait, uh, what? Like, when you're well, feeling things? No, oh, like, when my Charlene got, like, uh, like a, a kill top, I was like, wow. Then when the Sanking, when I'm just getting zoned by Undarks here, I'm like, cry baby. Yes, that was mildly triggering when you were doing that. <laughs> Sorry. That's right, it's now fine. that you're casting games, you will get to witness and feel all the, uh, the fun feelings that comes with listening to these, uh, chat wheel sounds all the time. I think I'm fine with the English ones, but the Russian ones are gonna uh, get yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, 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 that one. I like that one, though. I feel like it's very appropriate. They actually spot that out. They ping out Christina over here on the side, so... Meanwhile, over... You know, what it, hmm? you know what that one means, right? Yeah, it means, like, that just happened. I look up my chat wheel sounds. I need to know this Chinese one. This is what I need to know. Uh, my favorite is Sunstrike. The two people yelling. It's even better because there's two people yelling. What is the Night Stalker doing? Just getting a position early, I'm guessing. Yes. I was like, what is that noise? I'm like, oh, it's Evernight spamming his taunt. It sounded like seagulls for half a second, and I was like, I know that this is the underwater map, but I didn't think there were seagulls in it. Alright, here we go. I mean, it's gonna be a really cl good clinks game if like this guy uh, plays clinks a lot. Like if you you can play like clinks two ways. You can just like farm and farm and farm and just get stacked, or you can like invade and like the enemy's jungle and like just always be scouting them and like trying for kills with your spirit raker, which is what I kind of guess that they want to do. Like since they have that spirit raker, like the clinks can just go in and scout scout an enemy hero maybe in their jungle, and that charge can come through. Then the clinks can just go off. Yeah, I definitely like the idea of them getting really aggressive once Clinks, you know, is able to have like an item or two, just kind of doing the scouting and snowballing that way instead of him sitting casually in lane because I don't think that's going to work for them. Again, talking about Five Potatoes, they're a team that once they reach a certain point and they have the items that they're looking for, they just start really five man and grouping together. So if they can get some sort of like lead on this Clinks and be able to, you know, start scouting around over at the uh, like Lena or the Scient. Silencer, I think that's gonna go really well for them. And I didn't mute my phone, sorry about that. Get that lovely clarity noise coming off my phone. I'm sure like 10 people just check their own phones. I don't think many people have the clarity sound on their phone, do they? I'm not sure. Oh, I know what that means. That means that snow is complaining mid. I'm saying, Christina, come win my lane for me. The high wards. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, taking a look in CS, we are seeing that Lena is currently in the lead for CS 8 and 2. Not too, too far behind, though. Um, the OD 7 and 1, and Troll is just right on par with Lena 8 and 2 as well. There's not too much that the Starkseer can really do up here other than throwing out the Ion Shell. And they did grab an Iron Talon, just trying to take down that Iron Shell Creep as fast as possible. Yeah, this Clinks is struggling, though. Uh, for some reason, like, ranging KB, like, kind of sacks their safe lane early. Like, by the way, they're supposed to, their support, support's roaming. So, like, Pony has to, like, 1v1 against Dubes, like, every time. And then Dubes is just getting, like, levels which are better on him than are on the Clinks. 
so he can like level up his aura or max his firestorm faster. So it's just harder for them the clink to lane. Uh, I don't know. I feel like they need to. I need they need to zone dupes in my opinion. Well, dupes was definitely a playmaker in game number one. So the more that we can see, you know, pressure being put on him, possibly. Um, it, it's tough though too because you don't want to let the mid just go ahead and farm. You don't want the safe laner just farming either. But you need to keep some sort of like presence on the map so that they feel unsafe kind of at all times. And the spirit breaker kind of does that. It does provide you know a way to put pressure but at the same time like you can see him coming if you've got good wards you've got you know a couple of different ways to kind of slow him down kite him um he really needs a partner in crime for a lot of these i feel like maybe if again i i didn't see crystal maiden do any like i think she did one smoke with uh who was it last game the night stalker you know crystal maiden is so strong early on yeah she's slow but, you know, you get a point in the Frostbite, you get a point in the Crystal Nova, just start putting pressure on that Lina. Especially because of the fact that they're going to be able to go and just hold this uh, Lina in place using the OD. Follow it up with like a Frostbite, because she is slow, she's going to be able to close the gap, and then have a charge in from the Spirit Breaker. I feel like there's just so many ways to set up a gank on this Lina that they're not taking advantage of right now. Granted, it's two minutes in. But that's like kind of what I see happening on the side of... Uh, ranged MKB right now because there's not too too much that they can do to this Underlord honestly he just really isn't I think this Lina this, uh, the OD is doing well despite being laning against Lina like I think Lina normally wins that matchup and the OD made like a really nice itemization item, choice by getting an early stick because that Lina is going to want to spam out spam out spells so right now he's trading even with the Lina which is pretty good for OD but yeah I agree with you they could be ganking like Lina right now but I mean, I'm, I think as long as OD is, like, is having a fine lane, they're completely fine with just the solo 1v1. Any issues coming up from a uh, range in KP? I wonder if there's some sort of a uh, patch or something coming out. Or updates, I don't know. I know I know that carry player was having trouble earlier trying to connect into the lobby and like his updates and stuff were being a problem, so I don't know if it's internet. But uh, we do have a com um, a timer going, so hopefully we don't run out of the uh, pause time here. All I'm hoping for is a uh, TI invites. <laughs> Looks like Ponyboy has uh, come back in here. Hopefully maybe that's cleared up his issues. We'll find out. All right, looks like we're back and ready to go here. Night Stalker trying to get his levels here. He's currently sitting at level two. Doesn't have an Iron Talon or anything, uh, just kind of duking it out here in the jungle. We did see a rotation come out here from the Spirit Breaker. I'm not sure what this is really going to accomplish, though. I don't think they can really get a kill up here, because the uh, Spirit Breaker is only level 1. Looks like Darkseer is level 3, but... I don't think that troll's really afraid of any of them. Charge coming forward. We'll be able to disrupt his farming a little bit. They've got that illusion rune. Uh, never night, you know, that's pretty much all he can do here other than, you know, maybe get a little more experience. He did hit his level 2 now, so. I mean, what they probably want to be doing is they want to put, like, the Iron Shell in the dark on the, uh, Spirit Breaker and, like, let him run with it. Like, you could just, yeah. you could Iron Shell the, uh, Spirit Breaker and, like, let him charge mid, and that would be pretty annoying. That would be really annoying for Snow. But instead, like, he's just randomly charging, and it's not really accomplishing that much. But I guess it's making space for the Dark Star to get last hits. Because even if you iron shield a creep, you're not like guaranteed to get the last hit, which is kind of what you kind of want to still farm it. Like right now, he can finally get a soul ring because maybe he got those last hits where otherwise he wouldn't have if the spirit breaker was in his lane. See, this is a huge mistake coming out from the side of uh, Team MKB here. It looks like they went for a stack and a pull, and unfortunately, you just can't do that when they have an underlord, especially one that's really strong. And Turf already causing problems down here in the bot lane. It's nighttime, is just putting some pressure down here on the little Skelly Man and the Crystal Maiden. 
Uh, looks like Diaspora's in a little bit of trouble here top as well. They don't have any... They've got Surge! They've got Ion Shell! They don't have enough for both, though, and Soul Ring is actually on cooldown. A bit of pincering action coming over here on mid. We do see that Lena's coming back over. Does have that uh, Night Stalker standing nearby. And KTP now, he's in a little bit of trouble. Nice Light Strike Array coming in. Couple right clicks. He should be able to get out here. Does have that stick. But uh, Evernight actually going to be able to get the kill on Diaspora in the top lane. Looks like Crystal Maiden TP'd in down here. Needs to be really careful though, because this Night Stalker could re engage, but uh, did rotate for her OD in an attempt to keep him alive. Mm, KTP, he's getting really, really low here. He needs to be very, very careful. Does have the fairy fire, does have the wand. Nice stalker, he sees the crystal maiden around the corner. Oh, that could be a mistake coming out here. For KTP, he uses his uh, astral imprisonment aggressively to get last hits. Looks like Turf's not going to be able to go back in, though. Just kind of circling near the shrine, hoping that one of them will try to go over there and use it, and maybe he can clean up. Yeah, this nice stalker is just kind of annoying the mid lane right now. He wants to gank the uh, mid, he wants to gag the OD, but the CM is just guarding him. But he's not really getting- he's kind of annoying them, but he's still not getting that much done. Oh, there's the Laguna Blade turning around. Oh, he's not able to get the Void off! He's in a little bit of trouble here, gonna try to run himself out. Should be fine. He's still sticking around, but that salve, that was a nice bait coming out from KTP. And now Snow, he's getting charged by Spirit Breaker. Still got quite a bit of health left. No bottle charges, though, and he's out of mana. In fact, here comes the 2-2. Evernight will cancel it out, though. Haste available bottom. Surprised that, uh... Night Stalker sitting up on top does find the Crystal Maiden. She does have a shrine available. I don't think she's too too afraid of this. We'll just hug shrine. Although a haste rune picked up here over on turf means that he's looking to re-engage. Yeah, Rondo's headband running face first into that Night Stalker yet again. Frostbite coming out, but it looks like it's not going to be enough for our poor Frost Sorcerer. She's going to get taken down. A charge coming out as well. Klinks has gone and TP'd here. We'll be able to get off one arrow. Needs to get a little bit more damage. Again, Spirit Breaker charging in. He wants to get this kill. Ice Hawker's just so fast at nighttime. Oh my goodness. We'll get the bonk off. Trying to get like that. No, oh, there's the bash. She needs one more hit. And uh, Nice Sucker actually will make it out alive. Oh, 20 hit points. Okay, just had a little more damage. You could have dove that if he knew it was gonna get a bash there. Also, uh, Klink's kind of made a mistake by uh, you saw he like auto attacked the uh, Night Stalker be once he before he came out of the, mm -hmm. the skeleton wall. Although they might get to kill an Underlord down here, and there's a pause. That is yeah. uh, yep. Yeah, as I was, as I was Discord playing, crashed. Actually, oh boy, I gotta make another timer for uh. Yeah, so as I was saying, like he kind of. He kind of auto-attacked right before he came out of Skeleton Walk, while the yeah, Night Stalker had haste. What he wanted to do, he wanted to like just keep chasing him until the Spirit Breaker caught up, and then he would have definitely gotten the kill. Yeah, definitely, just because he's so misplay. fast early, and he just wasn't able to catch it. Yeah, it's just a slight misplay. It's fine though, I guess. Well, they might get the kill over here on uh, Dubes, although he's going to be able to hold him in place. Pony Boy, of course, just right on the edge here. Should yeah, be able to get that kill. Dead. Nice gank, and that's some, kind of what we were talking about, seeing these two kind of roam around early, not seeing the clinks very static in lane. Uh, I'm glad to see that they're doing that here. Yeah, all lanes have to be like pretty afraid of the clinks right now. I want to see him uh, rotate top though and pull Ooh, up a gank Crystal Maiden, on the Crystal Lord. Maiden. The bash is going to come out, we'll protect Rondo's headband. Turn back around the void, it does a lot of damage here. He wants to get that final hit, he's so fast. We'll get the Crystal Maiden, but clinks is going to be able to clean up here, I think. One more hit. This is like the game of close calls for this Night Stalker. Evernight probably needs to just back himself out. In fact, they go ahead, they throw the root into place, and now Evernight's going to be forced back by uh, two rotations coming in here. Calculated plays by the Night Stalker, I'm sure. I think it's uh, this game is going a lot better though for Ranging MKB. Like, uh, they have two, their two cores are on top of the CS right now. Which is really nice compared to the last game. And like the levels are a lot more uh, spread out across the board. Like level seven on all on all cores except for the troll. He was in a tri lane. Did the clinks being like being able to roam around get some like a lot more levels? 
also he was kind of like left solo, which is, which I thought was a bad thing at first, but the fact that he's still getting his good, he's getting still getting good farm, it's fine. Here comes the charge up towards the top lane here. It looks like Spirit Breaker gonna cancel it out at the last sec. Nice TP coming out from Diaspora. We'll force these two guys back here. Crystal Maiden standing nearby, looking maybe to get a freeze off onto the Sanser. It might actually work out for them. I feel like the Sanser is the easier target to kill in this particular lane, but uh, looks like Mitz pushed back a little bit here by Snow. He still has his Laguna up. He's putting a lot of damage over here onto this tower. And they've re-engaged in the top lane. There's going to be the Frost coming in. Again, we talked about the Silencer. Silencer's going to immediately get stunned up. Still giving chase. They've got the Ion Shell over here. Oh, a Bash comes out, though. And I'm not sure they're going to be able to finish up. Looks like Darkseer should be able to get the final hit over onto Silencer. Looks like he's going to pay for it with his life, though. Crystal Man coming around the corner. Can she get the freeze off? We'll be able to get the freeze. The root coming out. Oh, this could be a very... This could be a triple kill if they're not careful. And they will lose the <laughs> Darkseer. But they'll also lose the troll. And now the rotation coming out here from the Night Stalker. He's looking. The creep will actually give it away, that ever nice around that corner. One more hit, and he will get taken down. That was so weird, actually. Like, that Darkseer just, like, ran into those uh, whirling axes, and I don't think he got hit. That was weird. And now, uh, Rondo's headband trying to run himself out knows that there's probably a Night Stalker lurking around the corner. And it looks like Darkseer will run face to face to him. Does not have the shrine available? There's gonna be the uh the GT coming out again. It's gonna take a while for them to get up there though. Surge will come out, try to grab that rune in time, not gonna be able to do it. There's gonna be Snow. He's already rotated tops. This is a little bit scary for Darkseer here. They still have the charge coming out over onto Turf, but I think he might want to cancel it. Surge coming out as long as yeah, they canceled the charge. I think that's smart. They got the knights, um, sorry, not the knight sucker. They got the dark seer out alive, and I think that was the important part there. Space created. It's a lot of chase time. Absolutely, it's time Lena could be hitting creeps or ulting people. I think Snow's uh, pretty satisfied by just farming right now, getting uh, getting his items, getting his bloodstone. I feel like this OD is a little bit behind, honestly. Casual space count just running through mid. Pings do come out about it. I don't think he dives this. Never mind, he's diving. Rolling Axe is coming immediately. They don't have enough damage, though. Now, uh, Evernight's gonna have to run himself back. They do know that the troll is still there, though. And look, oh, they're gonna jump in. There's the Ion Shell, but they realize the TP's coming out. They don't want to chance it. Underlord coming around the corner here. We'll be able to grab the Crystal Maiden, throw out a Firestorm. Turning back around here, we do see that, uh, looks like he's gonna be able to get out. There's gonna be the Surge. Good Lord knows that Crystal Maiden needs all the help she can get when she's running. And ult actually gets used over into Min. They do clean up over onto Evernight. Yet again, Snow gonna have to go run back here. Maybe use his Shrine? Looks like he's just gonna retreat in general. I think a bit of miscommunication coming out there. Like the, uh, those two guys at top, like Crystal Maiden and, and the Dark Sarah weren't ready to go in yet, but the Spurger like just dove in, like, and they weren't ready yet, so they couldn't have killed the tower with them. And then, and that like forced TPs out, and then, you know, they didn't get anything from the trade, unfortunately. Fort comes out for bottom tower. Clink's able to do quite a bit of damage here. Just needs another couple clicks, but of course not everyone is visible on the map. We'll be able to get one more searing arrow off and then make his way out, so. Pretty active Clink's. Looks like he's going to be going for Deso as his next item. Uh, I'd like yeah, to see- He's having a nice time. So I kind of feel like uh, Orchid might not be that bad this game either on Clink's against Lina. Mm. This uh, silencer is incredibly poor. Doesn't have boots 12 minutes in. That is uh, the Diaspora support special. There's a ward over here onto the side. Looks like they want to try to get the kill here over onto OD. Not going to be able to do much with it. Kind of a wasted smoke. Although it will force the Crystal Maiden back because they were looking to try to get that uh, Lena. Again, I'd like to see Clink's and the... Uh, Spirit Breaker doing just a little bit more gank heavy work here, especially because of the fact that, you know, if you can see Clinks constantly farming a lane, they're not, the supports aren't spending money on, you know, oh, meanwhile, Crystal Maiden is dead. Bye, Rondo. Um, 
Mm, there's going to be the charge coming in here. It looks like they want to jump. Nope, they'll cancel it out. Uh, but what I was saying, though, is that when you've got a Klinx, if he's not showing in lane, you're afraid. And when you're afraid, you buy sentry wards. And when you buy sentry wards, you just don't have enough money. Meanwhile, Klinx, though, does show himself over here. He's just double silence. We'll be able to get the kill, though, over onto the silencer. And there's going to be the charge forward. Caught into that root, though. And they're going to try to teleport themselves out here. There's a lot of damage getting dropped off, but they're not going to be... Oh, they're going to be able to grab the Lina. I think Lina got left behind, right? Is that how nah. that... No, she was able... That's such a ridiculous TP. I thought he had disrupted uh, it. I have no duels of mechanics, because my, uh... On Season 1, like, Torn just played only OD, so... Yeah, it's a really weird mechanic, though. I don't know why it works like that. I don't think it should, but... The only thing that cancels it is death, I think. I just wasn't sure if possibly... Yeah, yeah, this OD's, like, criminally behind. What is he getting sent out to him right now? He's got his four staff. All right. That's going to help his positioning a little bit more. Nice call on Dubes getting that teleport out of there. It was time to go. This one will pick a... Not that bad, I guess. It hasn't really done that much, but... It's having an okay time so far. I mean, he's 0-1-0, zero, zero, but he's still having, like, some contribution. I watched the, uh, I watched like, I think it was a Summit game, like, before I played Underlord, he went like 0 8 zero. Everyone was just talking about how bad Underlord was. <laughs> I think he's having a fine game though, this, this time. It's working out for him, yeah, definitely. We do see that the uh, Night Stalker making his way bottom, there's a Crystal Maiden and the Clanks, they can't afford to get caught out here by a silence. In fact, I don't know if the rest of the team has TPs on them. Let's see, looks like TP on cooldown over on the Spirit Breaker, no TP on the Darkseer. This is actually very, very spooky for them, especially Crystal Maiden. CM is dead. Yep, immediately spotting over on the side. Did not see the Night Stalker behind her, I don't think. Okay, Pony in a lot of trouble too, trying to run himself out. They're a little bit split up. The OD actually TPs down to the bot lane. Wants to get this kill here over onto Silencer. There's no mana left over onto Silencer at all. There's going to be the throwing into the bubble. He needs to just turn around, give up a couple clicks here. One more hit over onto Diaspora. We'll take her out. And then, oh, Clinks, he's silenced up. They see him. They're going to try to get as much as they can out of this turf. He's juking around. They try to save him, but it looks like maybe KTP is going to get taken down. In the meanwhile, he's trying to just buy a little bit more time. The urn charge wears off. Over onto Clinks, they have the Spirit Breaker down here on the bot end, and they'll turn back around. They do find the Underlord, he'll force staff himself forward. Dubes is gonna get charged immediately. I don't know if this uh, Clinks can afford to show himself. He does spot out the Silencer over onto the side. They're gonna try to get the kill, but he caught that stick. He's gonna be absolutely fine here. One more hit, actually! Oh, they're able to take down the Underlord! Rotation coming out, Lightstrike Array does land over onto the Dark Seer. Clinks really can't re engage on any of this. He's just sitting very low. Does go ahead, just his Dark Pact, and eats himself a creep, so he's got a little bit more health now. And it looks like they might go back in for a re engagement. Yeah, that uh, Underlord is super tanky. That was hard to take him down. They do have, uh, they have, oh no, Crystal Maiden. She just melts under that sentry ward, although it looks like they're gonna be able to get the kill off over onto Snow, turn back around, there's the Whirling Axes coming out from the troll, but he has no mana left, he's not gonna be able to do too too much, there's a Surge coming out, the Underlord will TP himself back down, and most of the team over on the side of uh, Ranged MKB sitting pretty low, Turf actually running for it, he needs to be very very careful, they might turn this around, and it feels like they just aren't sure if they want to stay or go, that's three people caught over into the Underlord spell, Overnight turn back around, nice vacuum coming in again, looks like maybe the Darkseer is gonna be able to get out, they will be able to take down the spirit breaker darks here still he's trying to give chase trying to buy some time it's a lot of int right now that's over up and running over onto this uh, od he's got 18 turn around dupes will get taken down and they should be able to get the kill over onto turf turf he's not able gonna be able to kill the darks here in time <gasps> 20 something points the old didn't ult there i was expecting a really big uh sanities yeah but that was a really nice pit from the uh underload on three but unfortunately he didn't get a mini kills I just realized that Darkseer is 11 and didn't skill his ult. I was like, wow, where's the ult? Where's the wall from uh, our Darkseer here? But he actually chose not, chose rather not to pick it up. Surprising. Yeah, really interesting skill build from the Darkseer. Normally you want to get one point in it. Will's been farming this bloodstone for a while now, actually. He's, uh, he's pretty close, I guess. Oh, that dude, that uh, that like freaking that light strike away from like on that CM under the center, it like it did like half her HP with the uh, plus 80 light strike array damage. It was crazy. Well, she just melted. It was just like one giant light strike array and then uh, like one or two hits, just auto attacks coming off from her sister Lena there. 
I do like this new Immortal. I think it looks really, really cool. Well, it's like it's a Sunstrike. Pretty much. Sunstrike is Double usually stun. a little bit smaller, though. Oh, they get the kill on top again over onto Snow. Just when I updated my counter, too, I got updated again. Uh, he was actually, he was fine there, I think. He could have turned with the Light Striker and gotten the stun off. He probably thought, like, it might have been too long, though. But with the wind up, it's fine. I think they should be able to get this. T oh, they don't actually have the clink, so it's going to take them a little bit longer to take this top tower uh, without him. And he's doing a little bit of scouting down here. Needs to be careful. They did have some sentry wards earlier, but we'll just run past the Night Stalker and the Troll. Let them know that neither of these heroes are going to be available to go and defend the top currently. Knight gets popped, though, over here on Night Stalker. Lena's going to be up at about nine seconds. As a support, I hate nighttime, like the darkness. When you have a Night Stalker on the other team, it's the worst. None of my wards show anything. It's the best time to go and pull off ganks. It's like the one, one of the worst times to farm as well. So everything's just a lot scarier at the night time. So this draft is really working out for Team Range and MKB right now. Uh, they've been able to, you know, pull off a couple ganks, get a lot of towers, and start putting some serious pressure over onto the map. Yeah, I really, uh... I really thought their draft wouldn't work that well because they don't really have that that much AOE with the Darks here. Like, they don't have anything to catch it or stun. I guess they kind of have, like, Spirit Breaker. Oh, if I might pop a star here. I think the other thing that really was helpful is the fact that they have, you know, this nice combo that's going to be able to roam around, get some kills, and get their uh, gold up that way. So they've got a couple options. They can go for the full-on teamfight, but they don't have to. Um, and then really makes, you know, the supports very, very poor. Lightstrike Ray actually gonna land over onto the Darkseid. They do spot out the Clinks. He's just a little bit too close to the tower. And he's got double damage. DD. Ooh. There's the jump forward. They do spot the Troll. Strife coming out. They will be able to take out the Troll. And now I don't think they can really defend this on their own. They're gonna they have, have to... Have to tower. Yeah, they have to give up the tower right there. And uh, KTP will be able to get the last hit. Oh, good. look at the clanks, Clinks! He wants to come forward. He looks like he really wanted that Lena. There's gonna be the Deso reveal now as well. Rondo was looking like he wanted to go for that Frostbite, just gonna back off a little bit. They do spot a Courier here over into the woods. Turf kind of just... I'm not sure what he's doing over there, actually. A little bit of Bailando Surucho, I guess. And there's gonna be the Stray coming out from Clinks yet again, trying to put as much damage with this double damage as he can. Surprise That's been a really nice game. He has a he has all, all all the items he wants right now, and that DD uh, really helped him in that fight. He was like three shotting people pretty much. It was very fortuitous that he got it when he did. He's gonna run face first into this Night Stalker. I wonder if they want to turn around. Looks like, yeah, they need to be careful taking fights over here by the shrine. The s yeah, silence will come out. I think the uh, OD, the OD actually gave him the uh, bottle by the way. But he could use it whenever he wanted. That was a really nice. Uh, that was a really nice teamwork from the OD, giving uh, the Clinks a bottle so he could bottle the DD. That's smart, definitely. Looks like they're going for the spot T2 now. Lena does Five have potatoes a fresh gonna... Bloodstone. Yeah, she really doesn't want to die in this fight right now. No, definitely not. She needs to be very careful. They're just kind of mowing down through towers, and I like this turn coming out from ranged MKB. They've kind of figured out, okay, they're just going to constantly, you know, be running at us, and we're going to run at them and have the better team for it. And that's a dead Night Stalker. Yeah, that was uh, very questionable from that Night Stalker farming there. Especially after the vision was taken down. Huh. Maybe he figured they were going to just focus on the tower, and he thought he had a little bit more time. Shadowplay completed now over onto the troll, but I'm not sure what he's going to be able to really do with it. Because they're grouping up. They're actually doing a reverse five potatoes on them. They're all grouped up as five. They're fighting together. He's not going to be able to find any real pickoffs. The only thing that, you know, they, they do have dust over on the Crystal Maiden as well. And, uh, see, I'm considerably higher net worth than the Silencer. Mid tower just goes down. There's nothing that they can do about it. Yeah, this clink's staying like a truck. Oh, this Night Stalker not again. Yep, there's a charge coming out. We'll go for diving underneath the tower. They don't have the ultimate over on the Spear Breaker quite yet. They do have earn charges, though, if they want to go and pop it. Uh, in fact, he might want to throw that out there. He's going to just fly away. I don't know what the Spear Breaker thinks he's going to be able to do there. But, uh... Or that would, uh, drop the hammer. It's possible. 
probably want to save for the team fight. Yeah, I think I see the corner. So Night Stalker is stuck. Well, being stuck is better than being dead, right? <laughs> DV coming out here does seem like the Opener Lord. He wants to try to do something to slow him down. We'll be able to root the Clinks, but Clinks doesn't care. He can still attack during all of that. I probably not fighting this Pink. Pink Tops is not here. I think they just were trying to slow it down, but I think he also realizes that he really cannot fight into them right now. They need to take the high ground because all that Pink Tops has is a Shadow Blade, a Morbid Mask, and an Iron Talon. That's not enough to fight into these guys, unfortunately. I think he needs a real he really needs a BKB. I mean, also, the haven't he hasn't, hasn't gotten an off like a chance to rush on either because they have like they had no map control this whole game. If I were the side of the radiant right now, I'd go in there and I would just get an Aegis. Yeah, that looks like exactly what they're gonna do. Klings has that death, so he's gonna be able to melt this. He's got the orchid now too, so Lena is gonna be a little bit afraid of all of this. Uh, he finally got the orchid, yeah. It's gonna be really tough for Lena now. Lena wants to make sure she takes fights where she can win them, so she can get her bloodstone chargers up. He really doesn't want to like uh, take those these fights where she has to die constantly. I mean, the good news is she hasn't taken any bad fights since getting this bloodstone, but you know she can't be cautious forever. Do you see this, like, flag around the, the effigy on the dire? A flag? It's Dota symbol thing with, like, a blue yeah, Dota symbol. Yeah, that's, um, for winning... Battle Cup? Oh, Battle Cup champion? Because so. Turf has won, like, a bunch of Battle Cups. Or it's, like, from a different season. Never seen that before. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with Battle Cups. No, I'm, I've been Battle Cup champion, actually. I'm... Like yeah, last season though? This is from last season, I think, that's what that yeah, banner shows. Season. Were you did you win Champions Cup last season? Yeah. Well I don't I know. Am, man. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Alright, anyway. Nice force staff coming out here from the OD. We'll be able to just push the clanks back and I think they're just gonna slow siege. There's no reason for them to like overly commit here. Unless they see a good opening. And they can just afford to like soul siege with the clinks. Yeah, no reason to overcommit here. They do have really good wave clear though coming out from the side of the dire. Firestorm coupled with the uh, dragon slave will be able to obliterate a wave pretty quickly, but they've got to watch their positioning here as well. Yeah, he hasn't even gotten the spell amp on the underlord yet. They grab the clinks again. He's just gonna go ahead and invis. They do have that sentry ward giving them a little bit further vision. Uh, than what the tower can provide. But I mean, they're pinned in the base. Looks like Darkseer's trying to make a little space here over in mid, divide their attention, um, try to push in the wave that way. And it seems to be working, but uh, they're not committing, because it looks like Clinks is going to hang out over here in the jungle. I think his... Uh, yeah, he's looking for a creep to eat. Almost all the waves are pushed in except for bottom. Now this is the tricky I mean, part, is that they don't want to just keep feeding them waves into their base because eventually they will start getting items. Um, they need to probably back off, get a smoke, find a pick, or put like some nice wards up into the jungle, grab uh, Diaspora. Although they do spot the Night Stalker over here, there will be a Frostbite used, and it looks like Turf's going to back off because he doesn't know what else is lurking out there. Darkness gets used. And right now all three cores on the side of Team Ranged MKB are in the lead. We've got a... 10k net worth lead and a little under 10k lead in terms of team net worth. They're all smoked up, they're looking for a pick, but they're gonna run into Oops, five in. heroes. Ooh, Evernight is the one to reveal the smoke. Isn't a little bit of trouble here? There's the silence coming out, they might be able to get a really nice pick here. Mech gets used by the Darkseer, and the Selena's just hitting so fast and furious in the back end. They'll be able to land the Light Strike right over onto the OD. They actually use the Laguna Blade as well. Troll's in very, very bad shape. He's actually gonna take that beautiful wall vacuum combo into the OD hammer. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Dooms, he's looking like he might get out. Oh, he's not gonna be able to. One more hit coming out from the Klings will take him down. And, uh, that fight's over. Woo. Nice play, nice reaction times coming out from the side of the Radiant here. They have buyback over on the troll, they have buyback on the Underlord, but they're definitely going to be able to hit this tower and take it down, I have a feeling. Crystal Maiden's going to be respawning shortly, uh, rather rejoining the team. 
There's only so much that Snow can really do here. Nice Light Strike Array, though. Comes out over on the side. They do have the uh, Shadow Blade pickup on Lena as well. Has not died quite yet, but... They need to put some damage down here before the rest of the team comes out. I like how Dark Sawyer is just... Punch! Punch! I'm helping, guys. Um, they still have the Aegis over on those clinks, too. So Lena trying to just pop that. They do have the Vision. One more hit to the tower. We'll be able to take it down. They'll be able to go ahead and hit those... Uh, Shrines now. Lena's actually taken down. Pinktop's chasing after Pony here. Nice Crystal Bane Nolte coming here. in. They will be able to grab him. He might be able to get out. There's going to be the chase. The lots of damage. The Surge coming out as well. He pops the Shrine, but he's not able to get away from the Spirit Breaker Ultimate. And now Dube's in a lot of trouble here. The buyback comes out. He's actually got the Rod of Atos. Could have actually taken down Dube's there, but actually opts to go back. Clinks is going to respawn. One more hit over onto the Rax will do it. Darkseer's patience will wear off. He finally gets it going to be able to get four stepped out by the OD. The charge coming back in now over onto Snow. This is looking really scary for that Lena. Lena is down. She does not have a, those bloodstone charges and they're able to take Rax and tower in the top lane here. It looks like they're going to rotate. I think they realize that they can just get a little bit more here. There's not too, too much that the other team can do. They do need to be careful though because of course Clinks no longer has that uh, Aegis, but... The five-man push is, is strong here. Again, the root does not really matter to this Clinks. And now there's the signs coming out over onto the troll, trying to run himself out. Not going to be able to. Snow coming forward with the Light Strike Array will be able to take down Space Cow, but this is a godlike Clinks. They just can't slow him down. They can't grab him. And now Darkseer, maybe just a little bit overextended here, getting too greedy. Going to go ahead and mech. Immediately saved up by this OD. OD, he's got 52 int right now. Does not have the hammer. One more hit. We'll take Dooms down. Still trying to save this Darkseer, and they'll be able to get Lena yet again. That's a triple kill going out over onto that and that is the gg call so this series is actually going to be split one and one and there's the Friend rampage dudes. sometimes you just can't help yourself really exciting series um was very, i know there was a lot of talk about you know how each of these teams one was a little bit higher than the other but i feel like ranged mkb you know they figured out what five potatoes was kind of doing with their five man strat here and uh they took advantage of that knowledge. So, really nice games coming out from both teams. GG. Yeah, I wanted to see game three, honestly, after that. So. I know, right? Maybe they'll do a scrim at some point. We can cast that. But uh, thanks so much, Lance, for being my co tonight. I really appreciated it. I know you kept trying to dodge me. <laughs> Shake my head. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's going to be it for tonight, guys. We will have more Echo League coming up. Make sure you toss me a follow. Follow me on Twitter, at GGMissMoxie, uh, for updates. But otherwise, we'll see you around, and have a good night. GG.